I received from the Montauk Joiner Shop here. I just finished installing these shop-made chest lifts on the side of my Bargueno desk. And in the interest of making these as strong as possible, I ended up gluing these directly to the case sides. And I needed a way to clamp that glue line so that it's set up nice and strong. I don't really have any clamps that could reach the middle of this. So what I ended up doing instead was using screws. I screwed these verticals from the inside at the bottom, and then I screwed the chest lift handle at the top from the outside because I already have a bunch of dividers and stuff installed in here that prevented me from accessing this case from the inside. So that means I have this big ugly screw hole sitting here. And the way I usually see this get addressed on the interwebs is people will take a uh, plug cutter and cut a cross grain plug, try to get the grain and the color to match, and then stick it in there. It almost never works. It doesn't make your plug disappear. It makes it look like you tried to make it disappear and failed. And I don't really like that. So what I would do instead is use like a contrasting plug. I could just stick a piece of sapili in here and cut that flush. It'd be a little bit more of a decorative accent in that case. So what I'm going to be doing instead is adding some shiny bits of metal, something that draws the eye, adds a little bit of decorative punctuation. I'm going to be making a copper plug that is infilled with a contrasting wood. And doing this kind of thing is something I've been doing for years. I've worked with uh, brass in the solid. I've done uh, brass and copper tubing and filled with contrasting woods. I've done them such that they're flush with the surface or projecting a little bit and adding a little bit of shine that way. So I figured since I'm going to be doing that anyways, I might have viewers that'd be interested in seeing how that's done in case they want to add that to their own designs and add a little bit of pizzazz. So that's what I'm going to be doing in this video. All right, so here are the parts you're going to need in order to pull this off. Uh, starting with, of course, your copper tubing. Uh, this copper tubing I bought from Online Metals that provide all the critical measurements you're gonna to need to know before you purchase this. Uh, this is a quarter inch outside diameter to match the quarter inch screw hole that we're going to be filling. And the inside diameter is equally important. In this case, it is 3 16 inch. And the reason I ordered 3 16 uh, is not only because it has a little bit of thickness to the tubing itself, but also because I have a dowel plate here that uh, will be cutting my wooden stock to 3 16 of an inch to match. And this dowel plate, or dowel form, or some people call it, is by Lee Valley or Veritas Tools. It comes with interchangeable inserts at different diameters to make different sized dowels. The stock I'm going to be using is Sapili. Uh, you can see I just cut a little uh, long square or ripped a square out on the bandsaw. This is uh, just a little bit bigger than the inside diameter of my tubing. In fact, this was almost too big. The uh, width of this is almost equal to the quarter inch width of the tubing itself. You want to go just a little bit bigger from side to side on the square than the inside diameter of your tubing. And of course, because it's square. We all learned in preschool that square pegs don't fit into round holes. So I have a flat bottom spoke shave here that I can take the corners off with, make it more round, and also taper it a little bit so I'm able to get it started into my dowel former. I also have a pair of dowel calipers here to kind of double check the measurements and everything. I also have some files. Um, the files I'm going to use are really simple. Uh, this file is just a chainsaw file I got from the hardware store and put a handle on it. Uh, I also have a needle file here that it can clean up any schmutz on the inside edge of my tubing. I also have some sandpaper here. This is 120 grit sandpaper. That would allow me to uh, even out my edges in case my cuts aren't perfectly square and also perhaps adjust the length of the plug that I cut just a little bit. And of course the cut in, I'm gonna be using just a basic hacksaw with a fine tooth metal cutting blade on it. I've used angle grinders in the past, metal cutting wheels on them, but you know, they, they spin at such a high RPM, they tend to really heat things up to the point where you get some burn marks on things. And you know, so I just use a regular old hacksaw for that. And then I'm gonna need a hammer. And I'm gonna be using the hammer both to create my dowel by hammering it through the plate here, and also to uh, force the wooden dowel into the inside of my copper tubing. So those are the parts you're gonna need. And uh, yeah, let's get started. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is figure out how deep this screw hole is. Now the plug I wanna put in here, I want it to project a little bit. So I've got my dial calipers here. I have them set to metric because that's how I roll. And let's see how deep this is. Uh, just shy of nine millimeters deep. It's about 8.8. .8. Uh, and I want it to project about a mil and a half, maybe two mil. So I'm gonna cut my plug so that's just over a centimeter, I guess. 
and then I can always shave it down a little bit to get the projection that I want, but I got plenty of room here for projection. Um, so I'm gonna start with the centimeter and we'll see how that goes. Okay, so the next thing I wanna do is make it such that this uh, square peg will more easily fit into a round hole. So I got it you know, clamped up here in my leg vise and I got a flat bottom spoke shave and I'm just gonna take the corners off of this. And you can see that my little square peg is flexing all over the place. So you wanna get it you know, pretty deep into the, uh, into the vise. The other way you can do it is just hand hold it and do this one handed so I can Put it like this and just one hand it that way. If you don't have a flat bottom spoke shave, you could theoretically do this with a block plane pretty easily as well. You can see that it's starting to get more and more round as I go, but I think I prefer to do this in the vise. So then I can sight right down it and see how round I actually am. And you don't have to worry too much about the diameter that you're shaving this to because. Ultimately, I want the end of this, at least, to taper enough that it will fit into this dowel plate. So I'm going to keep going for a little bit and get this to where the tip of it will actually fit into that 3 16 hole. So I'll be right back after I finish that up. All right, so I've been shaving away at it for a while, and you can see that my dowel former will just fit over the end of that just barely. So I'm going to... whoops. I'm going to cut this to length. Obviously, it's way too long for me to, to hammer on. And, of course, I only need a little bit of length because, if you'll recall, I measured the depth of my screw hole. And it's, uh, if I want to get a little bit of projection, I only need about a centimeter of this to go into the uh, copper tubing. I'm going to go for a little bit more than that because I'm going to actually be cutting two plugs, one for each side of the chest. So I have about, oh, I don't know, maybe five centimeters or so of length here, and it's got a little bit of a taper to it. So I'm gonna cut this off with just a little flush cut saw here. I, I like to fine tooth of these. I should probably get a Japanese saw that has a little bit of set to the teeth. That's a fine tooth cross cut, because all of my Western back saws uh, for cross cutting are much more aggressive. And when you're trying to cross cut a tiny little piece like that with big fat teeth, on a cross cut saw, it tends to kind of make a mess of things. So to get a cleaner cut, I'm using this little flush cut saw. There's my plug. Now I'm going to grab my dowel former and I'm just gonna drop this into one of the dog holes on my bench. Now when you use a dowel former like this, and, and by the way, you can get these from multiple brand names. Lee Nielsen does one as well. Um, but you wanna put it on a part of your bench that is rock solid. So typically if your bench isn't like super rock solid, you would wanna put this dowel former over a dog hole that's uh, adjacent to or above a leg of the bench. My bench is rock solid the full length, but I'm doing it over here so I can be in front of the camera a little more easily. And I have my dowel cut to length, or what will soon be a dowel. And it's tapered enough that it just fits into that hole. I'm just gonna grab a hammer and have at it. When you get to the close to the end like this, you want to be real careful because the last thing you want to do is hit the edge of this metal hole with your hammer because you'll ding up the cutting surface, the part that shaves the wood to the diameter that you need. And so you want to stop just shy of that. And you can see my wood is starting to splinter up anyway, so I'm not going to get any out of this end of the dowel anyways, but... Now I'm almost all the way through and I have a nice 3 16 dowel sitting here. I'm gonna just grab another piece of wood like this, put it over what remains projecting there, and try to get it more of the way through. There we go. And now I should be able to wiggle that loose. There we have it. 3 16 dowel in Sapili. Oh, and another thing to note. So, the stock you use to make your wooden dowel is pretty important that you want the grain to be nice and straight. If the grain is running out 
pretty extremely in either direction, that dowel is just as likely to just splinter and break apart as you're hammering it as not. So make sure you use straight grain wood. You know, if you're trying to do this in walnut or something like that, that might force you to be a little more selective about the wood that you're choosing. This is a quarter sawn sapile in which the grain is really straight, so pretty user friendly in this case. I'm gonna now drive this into the inside of my metal tubing. Okay, so now I'm ready to drive this Sapili dowel into the inside of this copper tubing. And you can see I have a big old block of eight quarter maple here. Uh, that's all kinds of holes and dings in it because this is gonna, what I use as a sacrificial holder. So I have a quarter inch hole sitting here on this block of wood that I can hammer into so I don't damage my bench. And I'll actually hold it up for me, which is nice. And you'll recall that when I formed this dowel, I actually tapered the tip of it so it fit into the dowel former. And that same tapered tip is gonna help us when we start to drive it into the end of our copper tubing. So I'm gonna enlist the aid of this block to help hold this stable. And then I'm gonna to try to align the dowel with the hole it's going to fit into as best I can with my fingers and drive this in with a hammer. And you can see that it's fitting into there and shaving some wood off the edges, just like it would if this copper tubing was the dowel former. And I wanna to try to get as much of this dowel down into here as I can, because when I cut this to length, I want wood to be showing not only at the show end of the plug, but also I want wood to be flush with the back end of the plug, because that's where it's going to be getting glued into the hole. So, some nice light taps. Just slowly forces in there. I'll keep going until I'm either almost flush or something breaks off. Be aware that you do run the risk of your dowel splintering. I've never had one splinter and then get, you know, hammered into my finger, but I imagine that's a possibility. So be aware of that. If you can think of a better way to do this more safely, then more power to you. But I find that I'd really need to hold onto that dowel to help guide it into the hole, especially when I first start to hammer it in. All right, that went all the way in. I'm almost flush now. So I'm gonna work on the end of this to get it prepped for cutting to length. Now I've got my dowel in there such that it's just, the wood's projecting out the end of the uh, tubing just a little bit. So I wanna get that flush so that I know when I cut it to length, I know where I'm measuring from. So I'm just gonna rub it on some sandpaper here. You can tell I'm not a machinist, <laughs> probably, because you don't have to be that precious about this. If ultimately the end of this ends up a little bit pillowed, no big deal. The Dowel, because the very end of it had splintered a little bit, it's actually got a little bit of a gap on one side. So I'm gonna end up cutting that off because I don't want that gap showing when I ultimately cut my plug. Or what I can do instead is make this, the bottom of my plug and the other end that I'm sawing off be the show face, which I think is what I'm gonna do here. So really all I need to do is get this flush enough to mate to the bottom of the screw hole pretty closely. And then I want to take a little bit off this leading edge here so that when I drive that end into the screw hole, the little sharp edges of the copper don't catch. So I'm just gonna grab a file and do a very light chamfer on the edge of this. I guess you could also just rub it on your sandpaper like that, kind of spin it as you go. But that's tapered enough that it'll go into the screw hole nice and easily. So now I'm gonna measure and cut it. So now I'm going to measure from the end of the plug that's gonna be in the bottom of the screw hole here. So I'm gonna flip that around. I just got it on my bench hook here, an old bench hook that I kept around just for purposes like this. I'm gonna line up my little ruler with the end of it. I think I'm gonna go just I'm gonna go with a little more projection. So I'm gonna to go to about 11 millimeters. And you see I'm just using a very fine point Sharpie to put a little dot on there, like so. So that's about 11 mil in. And I'm gonna saw right at that spot with my basic hardware store hacksaw. And I'm just gonna press the hacksaw against the end of my saw stop here. So it makes it easy to kind of hold everything in place. And saw away.
Now my kerf is established, I can kind of move this out to where I can reach it easier. There we go. And I have the beginnings of a little metal plug infilled with some sapili. So now I gotta clean up this edge here, it's a mess. All right, so now I'm over here at my drill press. And on the way over here, it occurred to me that at the beginning of this video, when I was talking about all the parts you would need in order to pull this off, that I left out some things. Uh, so yeah, a drill press would be really nice. Uh, you could also use a hand drill, but with the drill press, it frees up both hands to be able to work on the end of this little plug here. So uh, if you're that guy who watched the beginning of this video and said, oh, that's all I need, and went out to the hardware store and got that stuff and then came back and then realized, oh, I need a drill press too? Come on, man. Sorry to that guy. So um, yeah, so I have my uh, plug at the drill press here and I also have some sandpaper at different grits. So uh, I have some 220 here, and I have some wet dry 400 and 600. And then I have this stuff here. I'm trying to remember what this stuff is called. It's not printed on the back. This was given to me. Let me check what it's called here. This stuff is called crocus cloth. Crocus cloth. I have no idea what this is, but it does leave a really nice polish on the copper uh, when I'm dressing the ends of this. So crocus cloth is Helpful, but not absolutely necessary if you have fine enough sandpaper to clean this up with. And I'm also going to be using a file over here. And the way I'm going to dress the end of this is just to chuck it up in the drill press. Just a quarter inch diameter, right? So just put a little bit of it into the end here. The end that's going to be the bottom of the screw hole. I wanna leave enough projecting out that I can dress the sides of this as well, because remember that this plug is gonna project from the surface of the wood. And so I want the copper on that end to be nice and shiny. So I got that chucked up. And now I have all of my kind of schmutz from when I saw this with the hacksaw on the edges of this. Rather than take the sandpaper right to it um, and risk kind of tearing through it and get myself in the finger, I'm gonna hit that edge with a file and kind of bevel it a little bit first. And then I'm gonna dress the bottom of that and the sides with the sandpaper. By the way, according to the drill press instructions, I'm running this at about a thousand RPM for this copper. And I'm wearing some safety glasses because getting a shaving of copper into your eye is a recipe for a bad day. So let's go ahead and run this and bevel up the edges here. See if I can get a good picture of that so you can see that I beveled that edge there. Now I'm gonna let the drill press run and address the end of the plug with sandpaper. Uh, I'll start with 220 and see how it goes. It's good to uh, drop it out of the truck once in a while and give it a good examination because um, you might find that you need to back up to a uh, more quartz grit to start and then work your way through the grits, but we'll see how this goes. So I'm gonna address the end with uh, 220 to start and try to get that nice and smooth. As I get into the finer grits, I'm going to dress the sides as well. I really only need to dress the sides with, you know, like a 600 grit or that other paper that I was using, the crocus cloth, uh, to get that nice and shiny on the end there. But the part I'm really focusing on is the end of the plug where the wood meets the metal. Of course, the bevel there as well, because that's the part that's gonna be sticking out at you after it's installed on the furniture piece. So here we go. Yep, I'm gonna wanna go a little bit more coarse. There's some saw marks there that the 220 is not taken out. Now we're getting somewhere. Now I'll go back to the 220. Ooh, 
Look at that. Ooh, that's looking nice. I just need to reestablish that bevel on the edge though. It's kind of gone away now that I've sanded it down a little bit. So I'm gonna come in with the file again, reestablish that bevel around the rim, and then polish that with this paper again. Yeah, all right then. Let me get you a picture of that. Just realized when I was about to take a picture of this that uh, you could still see file marks on that, that bevel edge. So I'm gonna back up and go through the sandpaper grits again to get that smoothed out. That's better, let's take a picture of that. So this one is about ready to go, but if you'll recall, I have two chest lifts that I'm gonna be putting plugs in, which means I need a second plug that is exactly like this one. So I need to make another one using the exact same procedure I just showed you and make sure that it is the same length as this one. And uh, then I'll be ready to install both of the plugs. So I'm gonna make another one of these and then I'll show you the final installation. All right, so I'm over here by the chest that I'm gonna be installing these plugs into and I have my little setup here. So I have some paperboard and some paper towel in case I get glue where it doesn't belong. And I have my plugs, of course. I have a little scrap piece of wood that I can use as uh, a strike block to drive these home should the need arise. And of course I have a, a little hammer off screen here. And then I have a toothpick that I cut in half using some side cutters. And I'm gonna use a blunt end of the toothpick to apply this uh, adhesive into the screw hole. And the adhesive that I'm using is by Gorilla Glue, and it's their uh, contact adhesive called Clear Grip. And I've had really good luck using this onto spirit materials. So I've glued rubber to metal, I've glued um, wood to metal, and I've glued metal to metal. So in the interest of having these plugs stay put, uh, rather than use uh, you know just high glue like I used to, which would really only adhere to the wood to wood contact surfaces, I'm gonna use this stuff. And I've got it warmed up in my bottle warmer. I have produced a YouTube short about how to warm up your glue so it flows better. When this stuff is cold, it doesn't flow worth anything. So I got it warmed up a little bit and now I'm ready to apply my plugs. All right, so I'm gonna squeeze a little bit of glue out of the end of this thing and get it on the end of my toothpick. Just like so, get a nice big bead on there. It's thick enough that it doesn't really drip off. If you're careful about it. I'm gonna come in here and apply that into the end of the hole. It's like that board game operation, if you'll recall. It requires a steady hand to get in there and I'm gonna apply that to the sides of the hole as well as the back end of it. This glue likes to keep coming out after you've given it one squeeze. So uh, it's easy to get more off of it. And then I have to set this down on that paperboard that I showed you earlier. And I'm gonna put just a little bit on the back end of the plug that I'm going to be sticking into the hole. So I have a little bit of glue on both surfaces there. And I'm gonna set this down and try to press it home. And sometimes it'll go home with just finger pressure. I'm gonna give it a little tap just in case. So when you tap this with a block, you wanna turn the block off so you're actually uh, pushing on the rim of the metal instead of the wood that's in the center of your plug. Otherwise you might drive the wood that's in the center of the plug down inside. And in the interest of having it flush to the end of the plug, you wanna hit the edge of the metal. And this is just a little Warrington pattern, you know, four ounce uh, hammer here. There we go. It's driven home. And it's projecting out about uh, maybe two, two and a half mil, which is great. This wood on the end here, you see it's very light because I sanded it and haven't applied finish yet. So when I get some finish on the end of this, that sapili, the end grain will darken up considerably and it'll provide a nice contrast to the copper on the uh, edges of the plug there. Before I do that, I wanna make sure that I don't handle this. As sexy as it is, you wanna avoid fondling your metal until they got some finish on it. I like to use a film finish, like a uh, de-wax shellac, which will stick to pretty much anything, including metal. Uh, the other film finish I like to use is Vermont Natural Coatings of Polyway Furniture Finish. That also will stick to metal just fine. And now protect it from any kind of oils on your fingers that might um, 
you know, kind of tarnish the metal because I want this copper to stay nice and shiny for the duration. So we'll leave that alone until I go to apply the finish on this case side. And that is that. So that's it. That's how you can add brass or copper uh, plugs infilled with wood to your designs. One thing that I didn't cover is if you want those plugs to be flush to the surface, uh, the way you would do that is to make your plugs just slightly longer than the depth of the hole that you're putting them in. After you drive them home, and you wanna let the glue set, of course, and then put some uh, blue painter's tape around the edge of the hole, and then file the end of your plug down until you're making contact with your painter's tape. And then you want to stop filing, remove the painter's tape, and then move to a uh, heavy grit sandpaper on a hard sanding block. Keep uh, sanding the end of that plug until you're making contact with the surface, and then work your way through the grits until you get to the fine grits, which will result in not only a flush plug, but a surrounding wood surface that is ready for finish. Your finish prep is done at that point. So that's how you can apply a little bit of decorative punctuation to a design. Uh, there's a lot of not very exciting, kind of overly subdued furniture out there in the world. Kind of wish people were less afraid to decorate things. This is at least one way you can go about doing that. And I hope you got something out of this video. I'll catch you next time. Now, if you like what you saw here, please hit like and subscribe. It would help me out a lot. Also hit the little bell icon if you want to be notified anytime I release a new video. And if you didn't like what you saw here, keep it to yourself, pal. Or watch one of my other videos. You might like one of those. Thank you for watching.